Later on, when we want to make a reflection system for functions and user-defined types, we will have to find a way to describe variables. In the first example, we have a function with three types of parameters. We have an integer, float pointer, and a constring reference. In the second example, we have a class with three member variable types. We have the const int, volatile bool pointer, and a floating point array of size 4. If we want to describe these variables, we'll have to first look at how they are structured. In front of the type, we usually put const or volatile. These are the qualifiers of the type. After the type, we can put things like references, r-value references, pointers, and arrays. These are modifiers that will change the way how the type is interpreted. So this is what I came up with. You have your variable ID class. This class contains a type ID. It also contains the size of array. So if you have, for example, an integer with 256 this will be this 256 will be the array size or it will be either one if it, if it doesn't have an array size and you have your pointer amount this is because um, a type can have a lot of pointers so this is just the amount of pointers it has and then you have your flags so a type can only have either can only have const once you can put two times const here. So we have the const flag, the reference flag, the volatile flag. So volatile and then the reference and also rval reference. So this is just two times the ampersand. Next we just fill in the class. So being able to set and get flags, set the size of the array, get the size of the array check whether it's a pointer or an r-value reference and get the size either if it's a pointer or a reference we will return the size of a pointer otherwise we will return the size of the actual variable and then uh, just a hashing function we also need a function to fill in the values so this is a templated static function that will return a variable id so first of all uh, we have to if we get a type which could be could be something very specific like a const volatile in pointer bounds of size 64 for example we would first have to remove the extents so remove this and remove references if it has any in this case we don't but if it had a reference for example it would uh, remove it then remove all the pointers so this is actually a custom function so um, a type could have any number of pointers but in this case we want to remove all of them so this is a, a custom meta a template meta programming method it will remove all the pointers under until there's no pointer left and then return that type and then we remove the const volatile reference so this will actually just uh, remove the const volatile because the reference is already removed and then we have our strip type. So this type is just um, the underlying type. So without all of the uh, const volatile references, pointers, all of that removed. Uh, we just register that type as well, just in case it wasn't registered. Uh, so we don't crash the program. Then we just first check if it's a void. Uh, if this type is void and if it is, we just create it and do nothing about it. But if it isn't, we we using some uh, type traits. We check if it's a reference, if it's an rval reference. Get all these booleans and and amount of pointers and array size, and just fill in these values. So variables at const flag, set volatile flag, and then after all the values are set, we just return that variable. So this will create the variable ID. So I also made the get variable name function this will take the variable id and generate a string for it uh, so it will first take the name of the actual type id and then just add volatile or const if it's volatile or const uh, add an amount of pointers depending on how many there are add an array size to it if it has and then add r value 
at one or two ampersands at the end if it's an R value reference or just a normal reference. So here's a quick little demo to show the variable naming and the creation of variable IDs. Let's execute and let's compare. So we have your integers, so these all seem correct. Doesn't matter if you put, put const or volatile. And at the end, we do some extra special things just for testing, and you can see it's all correct. Uh, do note that uh, a 3D array or a 2D array or any size that is more than one will actually just be made into one single. So later on, we'll be able to apply this to functions and types. So if we have test struct, um, you'll see that these integers could be just described as variable IDs. Same for parameters of a function. So this could be variable ID, variable ID, variable ID. And here we have a small demo as well. We'll print the function and then print the structs. Function printing is a little bit more complex, but it just goes over parameters one by one. So let's execute. And here we go. So we have your return type void. So this is of test function. Parameter int, double reference, const char pointer, volatile inside int64. So this is this. And then floating point pointer. So C doesn't actually support passing arrays. It will um, downgrade it to a pointer instead. Uh, same with test function 2. Uh, it doesn't matter if the return type is different from void, still integer, int float. And then the struct is also int int reference and double so right here and yeah that's it thanks for watching the code will be in the github link below and i'll see you next time